Hey folks, Alexa Broda here. So I have been very quick to notice that since working at the high school, for me it's been six months now, that high school teachers are very curious what goes on in middle school, what it is like to teach middle school. And I'm also pretty sure that there are a few aspiring secondary teachers out there who are teetering back and forth between whether or not they want to teach middle or high school. So I'm here today to just kind of compare what I have noticed between the two. And at the very end, I just want to give you two key questions to ask yourself if you're trying to make a decision middle or high school. Here we go. Here, if you are new to my channel, I teach high school English. I also taught language arts to seventh and eighth graders. Yes, I am filming from my home because it is summer break. My kids are here. So if I am jumping around my house, it is because I'm multitasking, which is key to teaching. A major similarity between middle and high school. Lots of multitasking. Before I start, I just want to state the obvious, Captain Obvious right here. These are just my experiences. Other teachers might differ and what they experience in the high school or the middle school. Just keep that in mind. This is a really great time for me to film this because I put in six months at the high school, which means that teaching in middle school, it is still very fresh in my mind. It literally feels like yesterday. I couldn't think of a better time to film this episode. Differences, here we go. One of the first things I noticed is that high schoolers are much harder to engage. Is this me saying that high schoolers cannot be engaged? No, oh, but my oh my, it's a little more complicated. I'm naturally a very animated speaker, very animated when I talk. I like to use my hands. I change the tone of my voice all the time. This is me on camera. This is me in a classroom. It is naturally how I am. In the middle school, I step into a room. I talk like this. I use my hands, my voices, and I've got a lot of engagement. I'm doing this in the high school and I'm just, they're just looking at me like. I'm like, really? Okay, somebody didn't have their cereal this morning. But no, a lot of the engagement that I find myself using with high schoolers that I use with the middle schoolers is often regarded as corny. However, I am convinced that many of these high school students love the corniness. In my opinion, teaching is like being on stage. You have this audience and you're trying to keep their attention, right? Well, let's just say that with high schoolers, they're a tougher crowd. Can a tougher crowd be engaged? Absolutely. You just have to think a little differently. A lot of it has to do with their age. With high schoolers, they're teaching 15, 16, 17, 18, sometimes 19 year olds. Of course, that level of engagement is going to be a little different. And on top of that, the content that you're teaching is a little more complicated. Many of us believe that we want high school because it's the content that we want to teach, right? It's next level. But just keep in mind that some of that next level content might be tougher to deliver in terms of making it engaging, entertaining, all of that. But it's certainly possible, so don't think I'm telling you it's not. Next, you should know that middle schoolers have a lot more energy. There's pros and cons to this. For example, energy is necessary in terms of having momentum in class. If you're assigning group work, if you're doing literature circles or reader's workshop, writer's workshop, having a bit of energy is actually great. I noticed with high school, the lack of energy. Oh, Ms. Morota, I'm so tired. Do I have to work with him? I know I'm gonna do all the work. Wait, you're gonna make us get up? Ms. Morota, can I just do this for homework? Can I please just work by myself? Why do we have to work in groups? She's treating us like we're in middle school. Do you have any snacks? I can't work if I don't have snacks. Ms. Baroda, it's hot. I don't want to do any work. In high school, right, during class transitions, you've got students walking by, walking. Some of them are shouting a little bit, but it's nothing overbearing. It's nothing obnoxious. You don't get this sense of it's nothing but chaos here. Like, it is not that at all. It's chill, it's laid back, everyone's just kind of in their zone trying to find a friend or two to talk to and going to class. In the middle school, the transitions, you'll see running, you'll see shouting. Some students go as far as trying to throw their bodies up against the wall. You've got students literally running and jumping to your front door. It's not everyone, it's not every middle schooler, but you definitely see it. One of the things that I don't miss about the middle school in terms of energy, the screaming and the yelling got to me sometimes. Next, the content is different. I find that contextualizing content for the high school is easier. That's just me. The content just feels completely different. And then in high school, most likely you'll be asked to teach an elective as well. For example, I teach genocide. I teach women of color in literature. The planning is different. The content is different. Now for me, teaching in middle school, I was teaching students how to conduct an essay how to write an essay, the pieces, the structure of an essay. Where in high school, they're expected to already know how to write an essay, but it's more on 
how to enhance an essay. My point is it helps if you have an idea of what you're going to teach in middle school versus high school. Try to figure that out before making a decision. The content plays such a huge role. That was always a bit of a void that I felt teaching middle school was that I wasn't really teaching what I wanted to teach. In terms of classroom management, let's talk about that. In middle school, when it comes to routines of any kind, from how students enter the room, how they work in small groups, regardless of what the routine is, you have to model over and over and over and you have to revisit. You have to revisit all these different expectations throughout the whole year. I do want to say that if you're already a middle school teacher and you feel like it's been a couple of weeks, students aren't doing what it is that you want them to do, don't necessarily blame the routine or blame the group work itself. It very well could be that you just need another month of modeling because that's just middle school. My advice, by the way, take the ones who are doing it right and make little teachers out of them. Now you go into high school. For the most part, I only have to tell them once. I say it one time, I make sure that I hold that expectation every single day and they got it. Clearly, there's a difference with maturity level. With everything that I'm telling you, there's constantly this give and take. So with the older teenagers, they can handle more, they're a bit more responsible, you don't have to repeat yourself as many times, they're much more independent. But with that maturity level comes everything that I said about engagement. High schoolers can be a bit negative, a bit over dramatic. Think about how you were in high school when one bad thing was going on in your life, it was all encompassing. We're all, for the most part, a little self-absorbed at this age. It's okay, but these are just some of the differences. So yes, they're more independent, they're more responsible, you can give them more tasks, they get it, but there's a lot more complaining. I mean, with the exception of your honors, your gifted, your talented, your average typical senior student, they just want to do the bare minimum to get out and graduate, especially if they have zero plans and applying for college, which is fine. A lot of them want to get into trade schools and whatnot. It's hard to get them all excited about a book club. You know what I'm saying? I'm working on it. A lot of my friends, my previous colleagues, my current colleagues, they ask me about fights. How often does fighting seem to occur in middle school and high school? I will say the same thing. It comes in seasons, the types of fights are the same. The difference, I would say, is just high schoolers are much stronger. And these days, some kids are carrying weapons and you just really have to be careful. High schoolers can be a bit mouthier and actually move forward with their threats, where in middle school, they talk just to talk. Their threats are kind of empty. It's the shortest way I could describe it. I will say that in my school, when it comes to teacher and student, unfortunately, Teachers really do need to be careful with their words. We should be careful with our words anyway. I would be lying if I said that some students, in, in my current experience, I'm talking teenage girls, they can be a little intimidating in that I think some of them would take a swing at me if I said the wrong thing. I'm just being honest. A lot of these students who I teach, they have a lot of rage and some of them come from families where they're not taught necessarily to respect your teacher. It's, oh, if you're being disrespected, you do what you have to do to protect yourself. In my classes, I hear almost on a daily basis, not about me, about other teachers. I can't tell you how many times I hear this. I almost punch that in her face. Or they tell me about times where teachers have been hit in classes they've been in before. Are they true? I don't know. But I will say that I know teachers who have been attacked, that I know teachers who have been hit. So I'm not really, really not trying to get into all that. But in terms of fighting, I'm just saying that I'm very careful in what I say and how I say it. The last thing I want them to think I am being is combative with them. In this very moment, me teaching middle school, I cannot think of one female student who ever kind of came at me or threatened me. Now fast forward to me teaching high school for six months, two girls. If you're curious what happened in a nutshell, one girl tends to be a little extra, she does it for attention. I do a lot of ignoring, a lot of ignoring because in my experience, that helps alleviate all that attention getting is just kind of ignoring it, right? She decided that she would try to get my attention one last time by getting out of her seat, 
right in the middle of me teaching a lesson. She brushes as closely by me without actually touching me as she could, making her way to the trash can and says in the lowest voice that I believe she could recite this, she goes, don't think that I won't punch you in your face. Other similarities and differences. In middle school, you have the same group of students for the whole year. There's definitely some pros and cons to this. You get to know them better. You get to build relationships with them. At the high school, it changes every semester. So you get new students each semester, and then you get another set of new students each quarter for the electives that you're teaching. It's just a lot more students. I personally think it's really cool to teach students at all different grade levels. That's not for everyone. There are some teachers who would love to have the same students all year because you don't have to sit there and reteach programs multiple times throughout the year because you just have one set of students. Sports. High school sports is pretty fun. It's competitive, helps build community, camaraderie. Sometimes it can be a little harder building relationships with the males in your classroom, but when they play sports and you start asking questions and you're attending games, really helps with the relationship building and I genuinely enjoy it. I think a lot of middle schools try really hard to engage the community, the school, everyone in the games, but it just seems to be that everyone who is engaged in the sport are the ones playing the sport and their parents. That's just something I've noticed. The high school, it just seems like everybody cares who's potentially getting a scholarship. In high school, there's a lot of lateness and a lot of chronic absenteeism. In terms of lateness, I don't necessarily mean being late to class, like that certainly does happen. But for me, that hasn't been anything substantial that I would really feel I need to mention to you. When I say lateness, I'm talking about the time they actually get to school. My first block of the day, both semesters that I taught, there were so many students who I just never saw because they just could not seem to get to school until the second block of the day. Yes, there are lots of things that you can do about it, but that's it. There are things that you have to do about it. Happens in middle school too. Don't think it doesn't happen in middle school. But if you think it happens a lot in middle school, high school's worse. Cutting class, high school, it definitely happens. Parent involvement in middle school and high school is very different. In middle school, it's there to an extent. I'm not gonna act like there was so much parental involvement, but it was there. But by the time they get to high school, it really tapers off. I'll put it this way. My first parent-teacher conference night, I had zero parents. Zero. Not even one. Not one. And I think that this is kind of normal. Clearly, these kids are growing up and they're becoming more independent. And part of being independent is less parental involvement. However, I feel like there definitely could be more. And perhaps in the future, there's something more that I could do to get them involved. But it's a little hard to do when you don't have the same students all year. I think I've said enough by now about middle school versus high school. I do want to end with these two questions I would like for you to ask yourself right now if you are teetering back and forth between middle and high school. One, what is it that you really want to teach? You must have gotten into teaching because you enjoy the content. What is the content that you enjoy? Secondly, which age group resonates with you best? You won't really know unless you have experience. There are so many different ways that you could get some experience. Some of it is through volunteering. You've definitely worked with one of these age groups in your student teaching. Figure out a way to work with the other age group. If you find yourself really annoyed with a certain age group, then don't go there because there's a lot more of them. The first time I stepped into a middle school classroom, I should tell you that pretty much none of them spoke English. I was very nervous. I stepped into the high school classroom for the very first time. I was nothing but excited. It felt normal to me. It felt natural. This is what I want for you. Know what it is you want to teach. Know the age group that you feel most comfortable with and try to figure it out. If you have any specific questions about the middle school and the high school, just shoot me a question in the comments. You could even send me a message if you want. I don't care. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me, and I'll catch you later. Bye!